Hi, my name is Ethan Kim and I'm a technical support manager at Suprema. Today I would like to introduce Biostar 2.6 which was released in the beginning of April. This version of Biostar 2 introduces many highly anticipated features and a change to the license policy. In this video I will go through the new devices, new features, license changes, the recently released hotfix version of Biostar 2.6, and links for FAQ and configuration guides. I will not provide a configuration tutorial in this video. That information will be provided in the configuration guides in our knowledge base and the administrator's manual. The purpose of this short presentation will be to introduce the new p features and changes. There are three new devices that have been introduced. Bio Light N2 is the successor of BioLite Net, our popular time and attendance device. This new IP67 rated rugged device also supports NFC and Bluetooth. XPass D2 is a new RFID reader device for reading cards. It boasts an ingress protection of IP67 and impact protection of IK08. Biomini Plus 2 is a USB fingerprint enrollment device providing superior performance compared to the Biomini. It was only supported with the mobile app in previous versions, but now it is supported with the Biostar client as well. For further details about the device specification, please visit our homepage product page. Now let's move along to the new features that come with Biostar 2.6. On the system configuration side, daylight saving time has been added. Previously, this feature was unavailable and end users had to change the preference time one hour manually when the daylight saving time began. This new feature will allow the device times to be automatically adjusted when the daylight saving time begins and ends based on your configuration. With the new encryption key management feature, you can now manually configure the database encryption key. This will provide additional security to your database and devices, but please do not proceed with this configuration before you fully understand the caution material provided in the knowledge base. Configuring this on an existing site will lead to data loss. Biostar 2 uses many ports for its services. If any other service are used, these ports will cause problems with the service. It was difficult to troubleshoot these issues in the past because these ports were used in the background and many were not configurable. Now you can easily avoid port collision and configure the port to your own choosing with the new port status configuration user interface. If you have a site with many users and devices, you would notice that your server hard drive quickly became full with a massive amount of system logs. Now you are able to configure the log level for less or more system logs and you can also configure the system log retention period so that the logs will automatically delete after a configured amount of days. The video feature of Biostar 2 was only supported with MariaDB in the previous versions of Biostar 2. Now you can use the video feature even if you're using an MSSQL database to integrate Dahua, Hikvision, and Acti MVR. In past versions of Biostar 2, you could not reuse the card that you had blacklisted. The blacklist was there as a security feature, but many users blacklisted cards by mistake or wanted to reuse blacklisted cards. So we added the option of unblocking blacklisted CSN and weekend cards. If you enrolled and deleted an unassigned card, it was difficult to reuse it because the card was not searchable. You would have use the CSV import feature to reassign the card to a user. 
Now you can search the weekend card in the unassigned list, but note that you have to enter the full facility code and the card number to search the card. SCOS Smart Card support was provided with beta versions of the software in the past, but now it is included in the official Biostar 2.6 software. You can configure an iClass SCOS Smart Card if your device is configured to read SCOS cards. Refer, refer to the FAQ for details about device SCOS configuration. Previously, the car key of Biostar 2 was entered as decimal values and it was stored in the device in ASCII values. However, the industry standard is to store the car key in hexadecimal format. Hence, in Biostar 2.6, we have changed the car key input to hexadecimal values. If you configured the car key before with the previous version of Biostar 2, you can use the hexadecimal conversion tool to match your previous settings. The long-awaited user ID auto increment feature has been implemented. In previous versions of Biostar 2, you had to keep track of which user ID wasn't used yet and input it manually when creating a user. Now when you create a new user account, the server will input a new unique ID for the user automatically based on the last created user ID. In previous versions of Biostar 2, the access on card authentication mode could only follow the configuration of the device. Now you have the option to use the private authentication mode for access on cards. Note that this doesn't apply to secure credential cards. If you have a site sensitive about storing personal information, you might want to delete all personal information of a user stored in the server such as biometrics, PIN, phone number, email, birthday, and gender information after issuing an access on card. If you turn this feature on and issue an access on card, the user's personal information will only remain in the card and not on the server. Note that face templates cannot be stored in a smart card. When you have used your device testing in another Biostar version or with the SDK, you may want to factory reset your device to avoid any configurations on the device that may cause issues with the server. Previously, when you reset the device, its network configurations were reset as well. If you were using your devices in a DHCP mode in a local area, it wouldn't be an issue, but if your devices was in a remote site with no DHCP server, it would cause problems for you when you reset the device. Hence, we included the feature to reset the device settings without reset, resetting the network configurations. Note that this feature is only supported when you update your device firmware to the latest version released with Biostar 2.6. First generation entry level devices such as BioLite Net, BioEntry W, BioEntry Plus, XPass, XPass S2 do not support this feature. In order to use the new features of Biostar 2.6 and to apply bug fixes, you must upgrade to the latest firmware version. To make this more clear to the users, we added a pop up that appears when an admin user logs in to Biostar. This pop-up will list the devices that need a firmware upgrade to operate properly. Note that the firmware package now comes separately from the software. Please refer to the F FAQ for more details. Legacy mode was a feature in Biostar 1 that allowed the combination of card read from a third-party RFID reader and biometric authentication on a Suprema device to authenticate the user. You may want to use this feature if your site has a card type that is not supported with Suprema readers. This feature is now available in Biostar 2 as well and it is called the One Device Mode. Some second generation devices have two WiGAN ports. One is for WiGAN input and the other is for sending out the output signal. However, the software only supported using one port at once 
either with input or output. Now you can use either one or both at the same time with devices that do have separate ports for VGAN input and output. Event-based triggers are now possible, which allows you to trigger emails from BioStar 2 or the relay and sound of devices based on a configured event. Based on your site requirement, you may even trigger another relay than the normal door relay with your duress finger, but note that both the door relay and duress re relay will trigger on authentication success. Secure Tamper is a new security feature that deletes all information in the device once a tamper event is locked. A tamper event would occur when you remove the device from its bracket, which will be drilled to the wall. Before BioStar 2.6, you would only configure an account ID and extension number with numbers for the VoIP interphone feature. Now you can use a combination of alphabet, number, and special characters for these items. In order to use the VoIP feature, you will need a SIP server configured. Refer to our knowledge base for details. The events in the monitoring menu showed the device where a log happened, but it was hard to track where the device was if you had a vast number of doors on site. Hence, we added the option to add a door column to the monitoring menu for ve better visibility of the events. There are two new zone features that have been introduced in BioStar 2.6. The first one is the muster zone, which is a zone that allows you to track how many users are in a specified zone when an emergency occurs. You can also manage this zone as a danger zone where a user can only stay for a specified amount of time. You can have the device trigger an alarm and show in the zone status that the user exceeded the stay time. The zone is a global zone, which means that the status of the zone is determined by the server when it receives the logs from the devices. Interlock zone, which is currently only supported with Core Station as the master device, is a zone that provides an interlock area where one door is always locked if another door is sensed to be opened by the door sensor. This feature is usually used in laboratories or operation rooms to limit contamination from exterior grime. Moving on to license changes, please take extra caution before upgrading your software since the license policy has changed. There was only one type of license in the past for the access control and time attendance modules, but now there is a variety for the access control side and a separate license for the video module. The TNA license remains the same. Note that if you are using the AC standard license in BioStar 2.5 and upgrading to BioStar 2.6, it will automatically convert to the advanced license in BioStar 2.6. A hotfix version of BioStar 2.6 was released on May 16th to address some issues that have been discovered after the initial release of BioStar 2.6. There are two major items that were fixed in this version. If you're using MSSQL with BioStar 2, you might have noticed that the load speed is very slow when you select the monitoring log filter and check for previous day, week, or month logs. That issue has been resolved with this version. There is also an issue when you've been upgrading from an old version of BioStar 2 and took the sequential steps to upgrade to 2.6. There was a special property file in versions below 2.4.1 and below which was removed in BioStar 2.6 which was causing the error. You could see this runtime error on screen when you ran the installation. In that case, upgrade from BioStar 2.5 straight to 2.6.1 to resolve the issue. Unlike previous versions, you can upgrade from 2.5 straight to 2.6.1 without going through version 2.6. More details can be found in the announcement page provided at our technical support forum. 
If you're looking for the download link and a quick summary of the new features and FAQ, please check out our release notice on our technical su support portal provided as a link from this slide. For more basic inquiries and announcements, please visit our technical support solutions and forums page. For a step-by-step -step configuration guide of Biostar 2 features, please search Knowledge Base System Configuration page. You should be able to click on the link of the PDF file that is provided with this video. That concludes my introduction of the new features of Biostar 2.6. Please check our online articles for inquiries about new features, and if that still does not answer your questions, please contact us.